So we're starting here up in the northeast corner of our Heartland Petrochemical Complex in front of our administration building, and we're going to fly clockwise around the site. Before we get going here, I'll mention that as it stands now, HPC is currently sitting at about 90% complete, and we're currently accommodating 3,200 people on site each day. The first piece we'll look at is the AltaLink switchyard, where we have a bi-directional connection to the 240 kV electrical power grid. This has really come together quickly. We're on track to start importing power in June, and we'll be exporting power once we get our gas turbines commissioned in October of this year. Next is the center utility block, or what we refer to as CUB. This unit produces all the power, steam, boiler feed water, instrument air, and other utilities used throughout the complex. It's essentially an on-site cogeneration unit where we burn natural gas to drive turbines to produce power, and then we use the heat off the turbine exhaust to produce steam that's used throughout the complex. The CUB unit was sized to meet the HPC steam demand, and as such, we generate more power than HPC requires, and under normal operating conditions, we end up exporting about 50 megawatts, or half our generated power, out to the grid. Some of the key components in this area are two Siemens STG 800 gas turbines, the heat recovery steam generators, and the auxiliary boilers. This lineup of equipment redundancy along with our bi-directional connection to the electrical grids, provides extremely high reliability for all HPC utilities. Efforts on CUB these days are very much focused on closing out construction and handing systems over to our commissioning and startup teams, or CSU. A lot of the equipment in a facility like this is highly specialized, and you have to go out to global experts for things like rotating equipment, large fired heaters, and heat exchangers. But everywhere we could make a good business case for buying locally and utilizing Alberta fabrication shops and trades, we did. In some cases for commodities like vessels, pipe, fabricated steel, and assembled modules, we paid what appeared to be a premium on our upfront cost analysis compared to sourcing these through global markets. However, with efficiency gains we realized by working directly with local steel suppliers like Wayward Steel, and the Edmonton area and Grand Prairie mod yards led to huge execution efficiencies and proved to be highly cost effective for us in the end. The first processing unit in the Heartland complex is the propane dehydrogenation or the PDH plant. This is the facility where we take in Alberta propane as feedstock. We remove a hydrogen molecule which creates a double bond to produce propylene. Our plant is strategically located outside of Fort Saskatchewan in what we refer to as the Heartland region, which is a hub for much of the propane that's produced within Alberta, with supply coming from nearby fractionators, including a direct connection to our interpipeline ROF facility. Plant. The north end section of the PDH plant is the heart of our UOP Oldoflex technology, where you'll see the fired heaters and the reactor section of the plant. This is the area where, at high temperatures, low pressures, and in the presence of a noble metal catalyst, the propane is converted to propylene plus its byproducts. After the reaction section, the product goes through the reactor effluent compressor and then over to the separation system, where the lighter byproducts start to get separated out. The separation system is also what separates the vapor and the liquid sections of the plant. The south end of PDH is mostly the fractionation section, where we have the deethanizer, the PP splitter, and the depropanizer. You may remember seeing the PP splitter when it made the national and even the international news cycles as we transported it from Dacro Industries in southeast Edmonton all the way to site back in January of 2019. We've since erected it at site, and the internal installation process of shuttling materials and people to install 185 levels of internal trays lasted about seven months. Similar to CUB, the focus on PDH now is closing out construction to hand systems over to our CSU teams. There's lots of testing activities happening now, such as loop testing and big aerial cooler motor run-ins. The fact that there's only one crane still standing and scaffolding coming down is a good sign that we're at the end of construction. We now track to the west side of HPC to show off the polypropylene plant. 
This is the unit that takes liquid propylene and produces recyclable polypropylene pellets. The first processing unit we see is the purification train, where propylene from either our direct coupled PDH plant or from our off-site storage cavern is polished to ensure it meets the inlet feed specifications required to produce on-spec pellets. As we move around to the southwest corner of the complex, we see the PP water treatment area, where water is treated after it's used for washing rail cars. This also treats water used to cool pellets as soon as they're cut in the extruder. Flying back now to the north, we highlight polypropylene silos and the rail loading complex, or the RLC. The polypropylene silos are where we can batch produce separate grades of pellets for loading into our rail cars. From the silos, the pellets are transported over to the RLC where we wash and load rail cars. Now you see the PP reactor and the bigger structure adjacent to it is the purge bin, which sits over top of the extruder building, representing the center of the Grace Unipole process. This is where we use a licensed catalyst and specific reaction conditions to turn propylene into resin. The resin feeds down into the extruder where it's heated, mixed and formed into pellets through a precision dye plate and underwater pelletizer. There's also an additive system that we use to produce different grades of product, ensuring a high level of flexibility to meet customer requirements. Now we'll focus on the glycol coolers. There's a big heat load to be removed from the PP process. In the early stages, we evaluated a couple means of removing this heat, with the two front running options being the aerial coolers, such as this bank of 72 fin fans here, or a cooling water tower. After evaluating cost, operability, reliability, and environmental footprint, we opted to go with the fin fan cooler option, even though it came at a higher capital cost, but it eliminates the need for something in the order of one and a half to two million cubic meters of makeup water that would have had to come from the North Saskatchewan River. Moving further to the north, we see the rail yard and the Canadian Pacific rail tie-in. Here, we've constructed rail siding with an on-site operational capacity for 330 cars to receive, store, shuttle, clean, and load up to 21 cars daily of various grades of recyclable polypropylene pellets destined for various North American and global markets. The rail yard is complete and fully handed over to operations and ready to start receiving cars. The control center is a very active building where our technical and operations teams are performing function testing on the PDH plant right now, and they're also busy training on the process simulator. The laboratory building is another busy spot. Almost all of the analytical equipment is installed at this point, and the technicians are on site daily commissioning getting ready for startup. It is now fully turned over to operations. In closing, I'd just like to mention the incredible effort that's been put in by everyone involved to learn, manage, and mitigate the COVID health risk over the course of this pandemic that's enabled us to keep pushing ahead and make truly remarkable progress. From our intra-pipeline triage team to our site management team, all our contractors, and especially all of our workforce who have cleaned, worn masks, physically distanced, and followed all COVID protocols, they've enabled us to push forward and make outstanding progress in the last year through true collaboration, which is something we're all very proud of.